Today we have Jerry Cole. He is the director of rally, uh, director of rally and events for the city of Sturgis, and he has been in that position for three and a half years. He has been in the event and tourism business for the past 40 plus years. He was the president of National Tourism for six years. He was, um, a, he was involved in the Wildflowers Project in Wyoming in 1988 and 89, and he's been in this area since 2004. In his spare time, he likes mountain biking and training his hunting dogs, and a fun fact about him is his first rally that he attended was in 1978. So with that, let's give it up for Jerry Cole. Thank you very much for having me here today. Um, almost everybody in this state has heard of the rally, and most states and around the world has heard of the rally. Uh, the rally started with uh, Clarence Pappy Hoyle, who was a motorcycle dealer uh, in 1936, and he wanted more people to buy motorcycles. So they thought, well, let's do some races. Uh, the first year was 1938. They had nine participants and about 200 spectators, and they did races at the Meade County Fairgrounds. Uh, this is the 79th year, and if you uh, look at that, and 2019 minus 1938 is 81 years. Two years during World War II, the rally deceased because there wasn't any gasoline, and people couldn't get to, to Sturgis, and so for two years, they skipped the rally and then they started it again. But the rally continued to grow from a three-day event uh, in 1949. Main Street was first closed to park motorcycles on there. Um, the first 10 years, um, it was just races and they started doing rides up to Mount Rushmore because at that time, Mount Rushmore was being built uh, and it was very good tourism traction, and that hasn't stopped since then. So, uh, 64 was the first year of the hill climbs. The Jack Pine Gypsies uh, were the organization that actually put on it, and they would have uh, picnics in the park and for all the people who came. The first uh, vendors came to town in 1970. Uh, the attendance was 2,000 people, and so we had some t-shirt vendors and motorcycle parts vendors come into town in uh, 1970. It was moved to a seven-day event in 1975. Um, by 1982, uh, the rally grew to an estimated 20,000 people. And in 1983, the city closed City Park to the camping and debauchery that was going on at City Park, or so they thought. Anyway, uh, in, in 1983 uh, is when the rally took a turn for the better, uh, in our estimation. So what happened then is when the city park closed down for camping in Sturgis, the campground sprang, started springing up all over around Sturgis because um, people needed a place to stay. And they knew that the rally was a big thing, 20,000 people. So the campground started springing up and uh, the campground started marketing the rally at that point because they wanted people to stay in their campgrounds, the Buffalo Chip, the Glen Coves, all of those campgrounds. And so because of that marketing that they were doing, the rally started growing and uh, in 1986, Tom Monahan uh, built the logo that you see that's been with us, uh, the classic logo as it's called, and we have, uh, each year we do a logo for that year as well. Uh, in 1988, the 117 vendors uh, applied for uh, Main Street to sell goods. The rally continued going, growing, and in 1989, Pappy Hoyle passed away. Um, in 2000 was the 60th anniversary. 600,000 people showed up for that anniversary. Second largest crowd that Sturgis has, has ever had. The 75th was the largest at almost 737,000 uh, people. Um, so when you get that many people crammed in seven days into an area of 7,000 people, things start going haywire, 
and things started happening. And that's pretty much when the administration of Sturgis started looking at how can we manage this thing because before it hadn't really been managed. They just threw everything together and all of a sudden 600,000 people show up. Um, so they created in 2002 a special department, a uh, rally and events department, which uh, I'm the director of now and I have three other members of my team uh, that organize and put the rally together along with uh, the entire city that helped set up and tear down uh, during the rally. Uh, the annual attendance is uh, pretty steady in the last uh, 20 years, or around 500,000 people, give or take uh, 50,000 people. And as I said, the 75th anniversary had 750,000 almost people. So the rally in 2016, the rally evolved into a 10 day event. City Council decided that uh, there was a lot of people coming before and after the rally. They wanted to expand that to give people the rally experience. And uh, in 2016, we made uh, the first profit for the city. And people think, oh, you're making millions and millions of dollars. But if you look at that and the overhead that uh, we have in police and garbage and water and sewer and all the other things, we were going in the hole almost every year. And so it was just in the last five years that we actually started, uh, and I, I hate to say a profit in a muni municipality, but it is a profit. And uh, with that, we um, put that money back into the city. So we do streets and bridges and community center projects and trails and those type of things. So that's what happens to any excess money and in the city, there generally isn't any excess money because it all goes back to the citizens. It also saves the citizens' taxes each year uh, with that money by keeping the um, property taxes lower. Um, sponsorship uh, reached $1.7 million. Uh, and we started in 2016, was a drop from the 75th anniversary by quite a few. It was 400 and 30,000 or something like that in 2016. And so people came to us and said, we gotta do something. And so before that, the city was just, it was the Sturgis Rally was word of marketing except for what the campgrounds were doing. Now the city, uh, we put in um, close to $400,000 each year now uh, in marketing. And we partner with a lot of different businesses around Black Hills to help with that marketing as well. Uh, because we know that if the rally starts going down, the businesses that rely on those three weeks, uh, and I say three weeks because there's a week before and a week after the rally, that businesses rely on to make their profit for the year. Um, so in the last 20 years, um, you can see the 60th, uh, anniversary and the 75th anniversary or outliers but other than that it's been up and down right around 500,000 on the average mark um, in the last 10 years um, last year was the second largest rally in the last 10 years besides the 75th uh, people say wow well, it seems smaller What's happening with the rally, because it seems smaller, is the rally is spreading out. If you go to Hill City, if you go to Deadwood, if you go to the campgrounds, there's more people spread out. They're not concentrated in Sturgis. Now, everybody that comes to the rally comes to Sturgis. And that's pretty much known fact. Out of our surveys, everybody visits Sturgis about two and a half days. They're in the Black Hills for five and a half days. So they're doing other things. So they're spending money outside of Sturgis, around the Black Hills, um, when they come. Then what's the future? Um, the industry, uh, motorcycle industry right now is stagnant. The industry is trying to um, get the youth involved in the industry. The uh, concerts and other events are taking over. We're actually advertising and marketing as um, a motorcycle rally, a concert venue, and our concerts, all the venues that have concerts, 
those get probably 60% of our marketing value uh, when we're out there in our digital ads. We have an uh, increase from 2% uh, non-motorcycle riders to over 8% last year, and that will continue to grow. So people ask while well, the rally is gonna go down. Um, in the next 20 years, probably not, because we are using the music festival as a marketing tool. We do surveys every year, and uh, we know when people come, when they leave, how much they spend, uh, how long they stayed, uh, all of those. Uh, economic impact, we figure that every year. Um, we know that the younger people spend more money, but they stay less time. We know that first timers spend more money than the older people who have been there for a long time because the older people know how to get around and not spend as much money. Um, we figure our economic impact on direct spending, uh, which is I hand you money, that's direct spending. Now the indirect spending is you hand him money and that's an indirect spending. You got it from me, you give it to him because you need supplies for your business. And then the uh, induced spending is when he pays his employees and you pay your employees and I pay my employees. So we know uh, how much money is spent every year because we do uh, over 900 surveys uh, each year with rally goers and we know that we spend in direct and indirect spending over um, $750,000 on average or a million dollars on average uh, that we take in for the state of South Dakota whether it's Black Hills whether it's eastern South Dakota whether it's Wall anywhere all of that money comes in and this is what our rally goers spend generally in 10 days. And we're not surveying those people outside of the rally. Those 10 days is where we do the survey. We also uh, know that we uh, have about 14,000 employees that rely on the rally for their full-time jobs. How do you determine, uh, when you mention attendance each year, how do you actually decide or figure out how many people came through like Hills World Rally? Excellent question. Uh, there's a variety of things that uh, uh, we do. We measure uh, the amount of garbage uh, that we <laughs> put away in 10 days. We, we measure uh, the traffic flows. We have counters on every entrance and exit into uh, Sturgis. We measure those. The state DOT measures those and give us those reports. Um, we have uh, measurements at Mount Rushmore. Uh, how many how many motorcycles went in and out of Mount Rushmore each year? Um, we have sales tax reports that we gather from the sales tax reports. All of those things plus more go into uh, algebra formula, and it comes out the other side and says increase or decrease uh, from last year, and that's pretty much how we do that measurement. It's it's. Scientific, but it's probably not accurate the whole way because they're, you know, different things. You know, are people buying more stuff with throwaway packaging so there's more garbage this year? Are people drinking 10 more beers this year so there's more bottles in the trash? You know, I, I don't know. So, but that's how we do it is formula, and we've been using that formula for um, probably 20, 30 years now. Again, back at Character Coach, where do you see the future of the rally going in the next 5, 10, 15 years? Well, I think the, uh, as, as I kind of hit on in the presentation, the future of the rally is uh, not only bringing in the motorcycles, but the non-motorcycle people and the music festivals, uh, trying to market it as a 10-day music sure. festival. Um, we have almost... 150 plus bands that will be playing in 10 days around the Black Hills. And we try to market everybody. So if somebody is having a band in their place, it's going to be on that concert list if they get us that information. And so people, if, if you go to South by Southwest, you know South by Southwest has music venues all over the city in Austin. And that's what we're kind of trying to do is 
We have the headliners that Buffalo Chip and Full Throttle bring in. Uh, they draw the people, and then we have all of these upcoming bands that are playing all over the community in the Black Hills that we're trying to market to. And so if you might have a small band that you follow, those people will come into the rally because that band's playing. So I see a very stable rally for the next 20 years. Um, and I'm not going to look after the 100th anniversary, but for the next 20 years, we should be within that 450 to 550,000 people on a steady basis. I have a question. I'm Leo with Insight Partners. Um, what is your competition? So if people are not coming to the rally, are they going to Burning Man? I mean, what are they doing? Where do good, they spend their money? Good, they good, good, good question. Um, 20 years ago, um, there was eight rallies in the United States. Today, there are over 800 rallies in the United States. That is our competition. Almost every major city area in the country now supports a rally. What happens is that, let's see, do I want to go to my city? Okay, uh, Galveston, Texas has a rally. Um, I'm just going to go here, I'm going to blow my money on three days in Galveston because I live in Texas, it's easier for me to get to than Sturgis, and so I'm not going to go to Sturgis because I'm going to spend my money here. So the big three rallies, Laconia and Daytona and Sturgis, uh, have seen that growth in that market, and we have to compete with that in order to get people to say, it's my bucket list, and I want to do it, and I'm going to come. But we need to make it. We we need to show them the wow every year, so they'll come back. And and it's those people that are coming back. We have about a 30% turnover each year. We have about 30% new people, and about 30% fall off, get back in, not coming back. So we need to try to um, increase that beginning, but decrease that not coming back. So. You mentioned you're doing more uh, concerts, but then you also mentioned that wow factor. What other types of activities, events are you looking at doing to promote the wow factor? And kind of in conjunction with that, are there any actual motorcycle events like you could, when it first started racing and things of that nature, or maybe motorcycle shows? Good question. Um, Right now, in the Black Hills during the rally, I think there are approximately six different major races going on. Um, Buffalo Chip, Full Throttle, Black Hills Speedway, um, and the Fairgrounds all have races during the rally. So you can, you can go to anything from antique motorcycle racing, uh, what they used back in 1938, to um, the Teehees, uh, like it's Black Hill Speedway, that have the new motorcycles that they'll be racing. There's also hooligan races that are being very popular, which is you take your street ride and you bring it on the track and you ride it and you race it. Um, the other wild factor we have in, out of the entire country of rallies, we have the best riding mm -hmm. in the world. And people come from all over the world to ride our roads. And that's one draw. And we have Mount Rushmore, and we have Crazy Horse, and we have Devil's Tower, and we have all the national parks and monuments here that people want to come and see from all over the world. And so if they're in a motorcycle world, they'll be renting motorcycles in LA and driving out here and making that back roads trip uh, with Sturgis as the highlight. So yes, we have a lot of other things going on besides the music, and we have a lot of uh, motorcycle shows, um, Buffalo Chip, uh, Full Throttle, there's probably seven different motorcycle shows that go on. The museum, uh, the Motorcycle Museum has their Hall of Fame dinner uh, during midweek. Uh, that's always popularly attended. Uh, so a lot of things, a lot of different things for people to do. Um, with 
Sturgis, like uh, my husband grew up in Sturgis, and so they noticed that it really created an interesting situation for the community itself, um, with very little growth and it, you know lots of people from out of town bought the buildings and or created concrete, um, just asphalt everywhere. What are some ways that you guys are trying to really build the community for those that are there full time? Okay. Uh, very good question. And if you come to Sturgis, you'll see a lot of empty buildings on Main Street because uh, they are owned by people from out of state. Uh, businesses can go in those buildings, but they have to move out for 30 days during the rally. And if you're a business, you really don't want to move all your stock out of the building. However, there are several businesses in Sturgis that do that. Um, it's, uh, it's a perplexing problem because you know, can you really do ordinances to say you have to have a store open all year long? Well, then, I mean, that puts a burden on the store owners because if I go out of business and I have an empty store and I still own that store, and I'm just gonna to point to Shopco right now, they went out of business. If that was an ordinance, how can you, do you find those people for going out of business? I, you know, it's real tough to say. So yeah, it is a problem. Uh, property um, prices have increased over the past 20, 30 years to enormous amounts that as a business, you really couldn't go in and buy that property and have an ROI because you're now so far in debt from the property that it's not worth it uh, to you. So um, all we can do is, you know, we, we go to, um, business shows throughout the country. We try to entice businesses to come in. Um, there's new businesses coming in, um, but buying property off of downtown. Um, so there's those type of factors that we're, we're working with. Uh, we had a new, um, new business open on Junction Avenue right downtown. Um, the uh, uh, Heartland uh, Home Appliance Store. Uh, just opened down there. So we do have businesses and the city is growing. Um, we're one of the fastest growing cities now in South Dakota. Um, we have three or four brand new developments that have gone in. They're still building. So the city is expanding in those ways and, and those citizens are going to require new businesses coming in to help support them. The hospital just put a large um, construction project in and they have the hospital and emergency rooms now and uh, all of that. So over time, I think you'll see that changing. Um, but right now, yeah, it is, a, it is a concern and a problem for us. Uh, when you mentioned vendors and everything like that, how far ahead is someone to decide that they want to be a vendor in service, like if they want to have a booth on the main or something like that? Um, for this year, uh, we have uh, vendors still looking for property and coming in and being able to find property. Uh, for the 80th anniversary, if you don't do it in October, you're probably not gonna find a piece of property uh, because it just, it just expands. Um, what happens in the vendor industry, we have vendors that have been there for you know, 20, 30 years that come back every year and they know how to work uh, um, the crowd and, and how to make money. But we also have vendors that call us uh, almost on a weekly basis and say, I just started a new business, I want to rent property and I want to come in, I want to make my million dollars. And it's real tough to try to explain to somebody that's never been to a rally what it's about and that uh, you're probably not going to make as much money as you really thought because of the property costs. And that's the main thing is property costs. I mean, if, if you want on Main Street for uh, a 10, 20 foot space, you're probably going to pay between 10 and $30,000 for that property. And so you have to be able to sell a lot of merchandise or a lot of whatever you're selling. Um, Food vendors uh, are one of the toughest because if they come in and they buy a spot with the overhead of the food and trying to sell that and, and make a profit after the rally, uh, it's real hard. And some do, and some, but most of those who do have been there a long time, 
and they have four or five different locations around the community that they set up and they sell from, just like the t-shirt shop. You know, everybody says, ah, it's just t-shirt shops all over. Well, every corner has a different t-shirt shop, but the same businesses have four or five of those spots. And the inventory that they have to turn over in those spots, if you just have one spot, you're probably not going to do as well as you do in multiple spots. So, uh, anyway, I don't know if I answered that question, but... Can I piggyback on that question? Okay. For smaller vendors, do you uh, hear more from them to rent? Or, like, I guess... Big vendors will buy a property, mm -hmm. and then they'll probably rent out the space. Do people who want to come in and rent that space call you, or do they have to try to get a hold of that business property owner? Um, good question. Both. The city has property that we uh, have leased and that we own, but that property is for our sponsors. Once we get our sponsor uh, in line, and know exactly what properties that they want or don't want. And if we have openings, we will rent uh, spaces to small vendors on those properties, but most of our property is for our sponsors. Now, the other vendors, if you drive down Main Street or drive down Sturgis, you'll see all these signs that says vendor properties, open call, da 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 So we have, we have small indoor spaces. Mr. Owls on Main Street has probably 40 or 50 different vendors inside of their space. We have the city auditorium, the armory, um, that is the rally headquarters. We have vendors inside there. Most vendors want to be outside, and the outside frontages are cost prohibited to a lot of those, as I said, a lot of those smaller vendors. So they'll buy a venue space in the back, and when they do that, a lot of times it doesn't work out. Sometimes it does if it's on the right property. But um, that answered your question. Uh, Jerry, I want to talk about your marketing strategy. It sounds like a couple years ago, 2016, Surges as an event kind of just took off. Grasped that it was real then and took off. So on your marketing, um, you said you're, you're focused more on your digital marketing. Do you guys um, parallel with more local uh, Rapid City and Black Hills tourist style groups and organizations like Visit Rapid City that work outside of South Dakota to bring travelers and uh, party goers into Sturgis and Rapid City and the hills like entirely? Do you guys work together or is that something you're trying to tackle on your guys as, as a site? Yeah, we, we meet with uh, Black Hills Badlands Tourism uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we talk to them on their strategies uh, every year. We work with the state in the last four years. We began working with the state um, on their marketing strategies and it has been a very good partnership in the last four years. Before that it was pretty much everybody was separate. Sturges was separate from everybody and so what we've tried to do in the last four, four years is to align ourselves with those bigger, I mean, the state has more money than we can even think about doing. And Black Hills Badlands Tourism, they do a lot of print advertising as well as uh, they go to shows. And what we started doing uh, as well is we started going to different motorcycle shows and rallies ourselves with a booth and setting up uh, and marketing that way and that's also a good way that we go out and we talk to our sponsors on site because our sponsors travel around to these different shows so we're able to go out and talk to all of our sponsors new sponsors and those type of things so um, we we work with the state now um, this this is our first year working with the state in that their uh, social media and their ad agency is working with us as well and so Everybody's aligned in that marketing scheme now where we might hit a whole bunch of different ones. They might hit a whole bunch of different ones. So, uh, yeah, it's come together pretty well, and I think it's going to be uh, doing some good things in the future. Can I ask a question again? <coughs> 
Um, how has the airing of the show Full Throttle impacted Sturgis? I think that started back in 2016. Uh, yeah, that uh, that's not airing anymore. But for the three or four years that it did air, um, that was an amazing event for Sturgis, and I think that kept the rally attendance from stagnating during those times. Uh, I really do. Um, but full throttle, um, you, you still hear from emails. I get. I'm, I'm probably answering 25 to 30 personal messages off of Facebook every day. Um, another 20 emails during the, the course of the day that come in. But full throttle is all, a lot of times mentioned about, are they still doing the program? Are they, you know, and they have, full throttle has a giant following from that uh, program. And so, when it burned down, there was kind of a, a vacuum suck because then the, the TV um, didn't air it anymore. It went away and Full Throttle moved. And so there's kind of been a suck, but Full Throttle is back and they uh, have a new campground and Full Throttle Saloon north of uh, Bear Butte there. And uh, I think you'll be seeing some really good things coming out of that uh, area. So. My question as well, it's more geared toward your marketing. So it's a, it's a two part um, marketing question. Who do you, who is your targeted audience to come to Sturgis Rally? I know you talked about younger people spend more money, older people stay for longer periods of time. So who do you, who's your targeted audience? Who do you want to come to Sturgis? And then for the vendors, who do they typically market as well for people to come to? their shops or their food stands or whatever they're providing okay. services for? Um, our, our target market, uh, I mean, we have, we have different levels of, of, that we target. Uh, first and foremost is those people who are 30 to 65 who owns or has anything to do with mo motorcycles. That is our first market that we target. The second market is anybody on digital space that is looking for music festivals, uh, follows any of the headliners, um, country music, rock and roll music, classic music, those type of things. Uh, that's our that's our second market. Um, the vendors rare the vendors pretty much rely on all of the venues plus the city to market the rally. And they hope to pull them in off of the street when they get here. Most of those vendors. Now you'll have some of the big corporations like Hot Leathers, uh, who market all over the world, and they're they're also at all the other rallies. Um, but most of the medium-sized, smaller um, businesses, they aren't putting any money into marketing. They're hoping to pull you off the street. You walk by. I've got a deal for you. It's like the Midway concept. Are there specific vendors that you're marketing to that you want them to come and rent your space in Sturgis? Well, uh, what, yes. Good question. Um, we know that there's a lot of different um, vendors that want to come to Sturgis, uh, but what we want, what we're trying to market into Sturgis is the motorcycle aftermarket sales, the motorcycle, the OEMs, the other motorcycle. As you know, Harley-Davidson uh, is our sponsor and it's all Harley all the time, but there are other motorcycle places out there and people are riding other motorcycles. And if you go into the urban centers, you'll know that most of the young crowd is riding different types of motorcycles than Harley. And those um, areas we try to market for those motorcycles and try to bring those uh, BMWs and other motorcycles, Yamahas, Hondas, somewhere in the area. And, and we generally don't work with them. It's other, like the dealerships around the uh, Black Hills will work with them and bring them in. Uh, but yes, they're, we market to those types of 